Hello, I'm Pam Carruthers of Healing Stars and this is the chart for the full moon, 9th of September. It's set for London, which is summertime, it's 2.38 a.m. AM, so early in the morning. You, we always see a full moon really in the sky, at least uh, one, two days beforehand, so watch out Sunday, Monday night. Hopefully the sky will be clear. We start the week, however, with the moon in Aquarius. But this full moon is a really important one, I believe, because what's going on is that the moon is right next to Chiron. And the sun, which is always opposite at a full moon, of course, is also opposite Chiron. Chiron's the archetype of the wounded healer. It's where we're wounded, where we're hurt, where we're human, of course, because we're all hurt as human beings. But it's also where we can heal others because we understand, we have compassion. We can hurt others there also because we're inadvertently, we can hurt them, not intentionally, but we are, of course, wounded in that department. Now, Chiron is travelling through Pisces alongside Neptune for about eight years. So nothing is new. However, the full moon brings it into prominence because of its connection, of course, to the moon. The moon is all about emotions, feelings. Pisces is the most sensitive of all the signs. And of course, now that Neptune is also travelling through Pisces, this is a long journey, 13-year journey. Wounds, feelings, emotions are really coming to the surface. You might be feeling especially tearful or just basically very easily hurt in the coming week. So be aware that that's what this is all about. And the intention, of course, is to heal. Chiron is very much about awakening. It's known as the rainbow bridge between the old and the new. And the old, it begins because it orbits between Saturn, the old, and Uranus, which is the new. So a lot of the themes of Chiron are to do with awakening. You'll note that here's Uranus, it's retrograde at the moment, up there in Aries. This is, of course, set to the UK. Apologies to Americans. But Uranus and the South Node will be coming together because the South Node goes backwards through the Zodiac. This is, it, what this is doing is bringing up issues around Aries, anger, Mars, energy, this is war, but also the past. The other planet, very importantly, at this full moon is Venus, now in Virgo. She moved in on Friday about half past six in the evening. Venus is all about relationships and Virgo is all about purity and it's a Venus in Virgo isn't a virgin. It's basically a woman who is of herself. She owns herself. She's not, not anybody's property. In ancient Rome, most women were property of men. So she is, as I said, her own woman, her own person. Venus is also right opposite Neptune at the full moon. And that is bringing into awareness a lot of wounds that are going on in the world around women. The statistics are quite appalling for women who are raped, who are violently attacked. Healing, as I said, is the theme. And all through the week, we keep having Uranus, uh, sorry, Uranus, Net Chiron, actually look at them, they're both exactly the same degree. Thank you, Uranus, for bringing you to my attention. That's called a semi-sextile. That is a very good aspect in astrology. It's a little blue dotted line with a little uh, symbol on it. That means that there's a very good opportunity for healing because Uranus brings in the surprise element, the thinking outside the box. And Mercury is moving towards that opposition to Uranus. Not this week, but next week. The other important aspect in this chart is that Mars, here's Mars, 
will be moving through the week into Sagittarius. So it's at 26 degrees 47 minutes. So on Saturday, Mars moves into Sag. It's late in the, it's almost 11 o'clock at night in the UK. But that starts a whole new six week cycle. Mars in Sagittarius is thinking of the future, taking action. That's what Mars likes. Action in a future upward direction. Sagittarius is like Robin Hood, looking upwards, sending an arrow out into the world, following that mission, and then finding another one. So it's a very positive fire sign, and Mars will do well in a fire sign. It also will start connecting up with Jupiter. However, I'm getting ahead of myself. Back to this week. We start with the moon in Aquarius. It moves into Pisces on Monday, and that move is at, if you look at my book, it's uh, quarter past midnight, so we don't get much um, Aquarius energy this week. The moon will then, on Wednesday, it's two and a half days a sign, roughly, you can think about that. It will then move into the fiery sign of Aries at half past midnight, that's actually half past midnight on Wednesday night, i.e early morning on Thursday. On Friday it will move into Taurus where it's really comfortable and that's at 2.16 in the morning. And then next Sunday it will be in Gemini and that's at 7.26 a.m. So it's moving through Aquarius, Pisces, the last signs of the zodiac and then into the beginning. It's a new beginning happening every single month with the moon goes into Aquarius. But with the Sagittarian energy also being promoted by Mars and on Saturday, you know, for six weeks that is, that's another thing, that think of fresh beginnings, think of fresh starts. But before that, let's do some healing. Chiron can be the wound but also the gift. This is what I really believe in. It is not the wound that cannot be healed. I believe it is the wound that can be healed with awareness. And with that in mind, I'm hosting a webinar, a free webinar, on the 16th of September at 8 o'clock, which is summertime. If you subscribe to my newsletter, you'll get that information first. And it is a limited number webinar. It's not thousands of people. So it'd be great if you can join me. And I'm calling it Healing the Sacrifice Story. Because Pisces, Chiron, Neptune, all, that theme is about sacrifice. And that's a killer in a relationship, dare I say it. We need to come back to our centres and heal the wounds from the past. So this week... Be aware if you're oversensitive, that's the Pisces effect, that's the Chiron, that's the full moon effect. And take good care of yourself. Be kind to yourself. Love yourself. And be in touch with your heart energy. Thank you for watching. Hopefully I'll see you on my webinar next week. Pam Carruthers, HealingStars.com